What's up, Rangers? This is Phil Harris here at the Jacks Rangers Show. This and every episode of TJRS is sponsored by our friends at Inkify. This is Inkify, our good friends over there. Um, if you need screen printing for T-shirts, embroidery done, anything like that, our guy Carlos, he will take good care of you. Inkify is a family-owned small business that is committed to keeping production here in the good old U.S. of A. Uh, go to Inkify.com and tell them TJRS sent you to get 15% off of your entire order. Bozo6 is here with me. Bozo, how the hell are you? Uh, I'm good, Phil. I got the David Lawrence vibes going. Uh, the darkened yeah. basement with the with the LED lights. Uh, Looks shout fantastic. out to our guy David Lawrence. Yep. Cheers, buddy. Of the Scrum of the Earth podcast, the best MLR interviewer out there for sure. Um, and also, we've got a very very special guest this time around. Our new amigo, the captain of the Chilean national team, and new Free Jack signing, Martin Segrin. Martin, buenas noches. Uh, how are you, sir? Yeah, buenas noches. Um, yeah, just. <laughs> Real an honor to be to be here with you both. Uh, thank you for for the invite. It's an honor to have you. Glad that we were able to have you uh, join us this evening. Let's get right into it. Tell us where you're from. So I'm from Santiago, uh, Chile. Mm -hmm. Santiago be the the main capital. So yes, um, and you play for the Chilean national team, which is fantastic. Tell us your origin story with rugby. How did you find rugby? Yeah, so I, I went to. Uh, it, it all came from from family, really. Mm -hmm. um, my dad played played a lot of rugby. He he was in an in a boarding school in in Argentina where he learned to play and came back to Chile and and he got us he he got us into a, a British school. Oh, That's okay. where we we start learning at a at a young age. I'm I'm the fourth of five brothers, five boys. So wow, um, a rugby ball was always around <laughs> around the family and yeah yeah we we took it everywhere. Awesome. So uh, Chile is on the western uh, coast there of South America at the at, towards the bottom for, for folks that don't know. And a great rugby nation in and of itself. But also uh, Chile is a football mad country, just like other South American countries. Did you ever play football, soccer, of course? Um, um, and do you follow the sport still? Yeah, we, we all did. I think it was like a, a cultural thing. If if you wanted to have friends or friends or just mess around at school, you you needed to have a little bit of skills. Sure. Uh, with yep. your feet. So, so I, I I had to learn. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not really passionate as Chileans are. Yeah. Uh, about football, I I have my my things that I I not don't love. So. Uh -huh. I, I'd rather stick with rugby, honestly. I, I totally understand. Rugby has always been my number one, but I'm a big, big soccer fan. I'm a huge Manchester United fan, um, yeah. and, and they just drew, unfortunately, today. So hopefully they'll get back on track. But I wanted to ask you, you played for the uh, South American Professional League down there, which is now called Super Rugby Americas for Skelnum uh, previously. So what are your impressions of MLR? Did, did you watch quite a bit of MLR while you were down there? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I've honestly have a little, very little uh, knowledge of, of the of the league. Yeah. Um, I, I've been following it like a couple of years ago because my best friend Marcelo Torrealba used to play for for the for Austin. Okay. Yep. Um. So I I used to watch his games. Um. And then last season, another good friend of mine, Ramon, was playing in Toronto. Okay. So I was following those games, but. Yeah. As to as to the whole tournament, um, I don't follow it much, to be honest. Okay. Well, you're about to get a crash course coming up in January of, uh, of Major League Rugby. Last season, you played for Doncaster Knights, which is uh, in the uh, the uh, English Championship. You were the first ever Chilean player ever to play professionally over there in the English Championship. How much of a culture shock was it going from Chile to England? Yeah, like you say, it was a it was a huge shock. Mm -hmm. um, just going out of your comfort zone, uh, being uh, raised and playing all my rugby back home with with my family around, with my friends, mm -hmm. just hopping hopping into this new professional environment where where um, in England as well, where where they they tend to be a little bit colder than than us latins yeah yep. we, we like to we pride ourselves to say that we're we're made of skin so 
that was one of my big shocks there, like uh, the, the um, how just the relationships, how they they, they turn around. But, but it was a it was a huge, very good experience. I really enjoyed it, and it helped me grow not nice. only as a player but personally, tons. I got to tell you, New Englanders are kind of known for being very reserved. You know, uh, they don't or they're not overly friendly at first. They kind of have to feel you out to see if that you're you're worth their time. So that might be very similar to uh, to the English over there with their culture and stuff like that. But once you get to know all of the New Englanders and once they open up, they're, they're great people. So I'm excited to you know get you over here and experience New England culture. Uh, what type of conversations did you have with general manager Tom Kindly, TK? and uh, head coach Scott Matthew before agreeing to come to the team? Yeah, they, they were, um, I really enjoyed that conversation. They were just asking about my aspirations uh, as a player. They, they asked me about my experience on, on England, like what, what was uh, the things that, that challenged me the most? Uh, mm -hmm. What are my objectives in a, in a short term and a long term as a player and as a person? And, and what is it that I'm I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. um, what are the things that I think I should improve, and what are the things that I should keep on uh, keeping as my strength? So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was mainly around that. I really enjoyed that that conversation. Very good. You'll be the first Chilean player ever to play for the Free Jacks. Have you been talking to your Chilean national teammates to try to convince them to join you in New England, maybe uh, in 2025, perhaps? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. Obviously, if if it up, if it'd be up to me, um, I'd definitely take take a couple of mine up there because yeah. not only they're great players, but I, I great persons as well. So I think mm -hmm. they can they can help us as a team. But right. we'll see. I, I'm like you said, I'm gonna be the the first Chilean ever. So mm -hmm. I need to do a. a Give a good impression. Give my best to represent my yeah. my country in the best way possible. I'm sure you'll do a fantastic job in that respect. You know, we have a lot of Canadians uh, on the Free Jacks. I think 11 in total, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those guys are fantastic. Really great with locker room culture. So yeah, I'm sure you'll fit right in with those guys. Uh, Chile participated in the Rugby World Cup in France recently, having defeated Rugby Canada and the United States uh, to qualify, which is a bit of a heartbreaker for us. But what was your favorite moment in France? Uh, well, every moment was 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 unique, yeah. but I'll have to stick with the with the first game against Japan. Mm -hmm. um, just really emotional. It was our our first game ever on a World Cup. Just a stadium packed with Chileans. My all my family was there. Wow. You can see the whole stadium uh, turned red. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that that moment was was really special. I'm, I'm sure it was, man. That, that That's, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime type of opportunity there for sure. You're the captain of the Chilean national team. What would How would you describe your leadership style when it comes to being the captain? Well, I, I, I try to leave with by the example, mm -hmm. um, not only on the, on the field but outside as well. I I try to do uh, my, be my best and, and lead with the example. But mm -hmm. I'm also a really energetic leader. I... I know how to how to enjoy myself to to enjoy those those tough moments, you know, when you're yeah. maybe when you're doing some conditioning that everybody's struggling, and I know how to have a smile on my face and and have that contagious energy as well, so that everyone enjoy. And um, and I I'm just, I also have like this this feeling with with my with my teammates, like really being able to listen to them, have a good conversations with them and know how how they're feeling around and what the energy of the group is like. Mm -hmm. So then like just lead us on, on what we, we need at the moment. Sure. Yeah. Um, how would you describe how you play rugby? How are you on the pitch? Uh, what's the descriptions that you can provide to kind of give us an idea of what type of rugby player that you are? Yeah. Um, I think uh, my strength is around the, just the dirty work. Um, I'm not that really like, visual player that you're going to see and you're going to watch me doing the the 40 meter 40 meter runs or yep. other line breaks or or that i'm i'm more of a invisible player in that sense because right. i'm always in there i'm doing just the dirty work mm -hmm. the work that needs to be done um that's 
that's where I enjoy the most as well. Like just the, the point of contact on, on the physical battle. We love to hear that. You know, Bozo and I are old forwards ourselves, so we really appreciate that type of style of playing. Um, yeah, that, that's really, really encouraging. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, the 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 flankers and the eight man within the 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 free jacks are. I mean, we we've got stacked talent, and, and we have for quite a while in those areas. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to to get you out on the pitch and see see what you can do. Um, yeah. Uh, one more question for me, and I'm going to let Bozo take over. Are you familiar with how passionate uh, Boston and New England sports fans are? Are you familiar with uh, with uh, with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of how serious Boston takes its sport. Yeah, I'm a, I've, I've been a huge fan of the of the f- football team of oh so, the Patriots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my that's been my my team ever since I like. 12 years old that I started watching uh, American football. Wow. Okay. So, so yeah, um, I, I understand. And I, I also know like this university rivalry that there's around. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward for that because that's something that hypes, hypes the game as well. Like knowing that you got supporters and that people are, are taking it seriously. That's, mm-hmm. I love that type of pressure. That's fantastic. You know, uh, the Rangers out there and the first regiment, which is our fan supporters um, within Fort Quincy, as we call it there at uh, Veterans Memorial Stadium for the Free Jacks. We like to get a bit rowdy. We get quite loud. Uh, it's very it's a very, very intimidating atmosphere for the opposition. So I'm excited to, to see, uh, you know, see how you react to uh, just the fans, uh, you know, giving you love and support here in New England. But I'm going to let Bozo take over. I appreciate your time. No, cheers, man. Hi, uh, Martin. Good evening. I uh, just want a couple, throw a couple quick comments your way. I was, I was very saddened when you guys beat the USA and <laughs> sent us to the Repetitions tournament, but it was an incredible uh, leg of matches and, you know, really close nail biting matches with everything on the line is like, is like what you want to watch. And then also, I would also say that the 20 opening 20 minutes against England, man, was unreal. Yeah. unreal I, I i'm an england fan but i was like rooting for you guys that match because i was like this is some great stuff and you guys came out firing so i really liked that match and congratulations on your first world cup appearance for chile that was awesome uh, i think we'll we'll likely see you guys continuing on and on and on uh, i don't think it's the last time you guys will be there it was definitely pretty awesome uh so i just got some questions uh you know, because we want to get, we like to here in New England, we like to get to know the players, um, and and you'll see this, you'll feel it when you get up into Quincy. I'm sure that uh, T- TK has talked to you about it, but um, what what aspects of the American culture are are you excited for, you know, like experiencing? Like, has anybody shared anything with you, or have you seen anything where you're like, wow, I can't wait to do stuff like that, or or what? Yeah, I'm just, I just um, from from the experiences I've heard from from my mates who've been. Playing there, they they all come really happy of just the way you guys know how to enjoy yourself, like enjoy the game, enjoy the locker room, um, build like all the all that atmosphere around just uh, the sport. It's not just us going to play rugby, but it's important that if we enjoy ourselves, the team's gonna be is gonna be together, and that's gonna bring positive results. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward for that. Yeah, just one. I, I love to give unsolicited advice, but it, the first thing you could do to, to fit in with the team is if you showed up in flip flops and shorts with a light sweater, drinking an iced coffee from Dunkin's. If you showed up day one like that, whew, everyone would be like, this guy, he's a serious guy. He's for real. So, right. Noted. I'm doing no, right. it. Day one. <laughs> <laughs> and then so like uh so what do you like to do outside of rugby like what are your hobbies what do you what do you get into do you hunt do you fish hike stuff like that yeah i I'm, i've been really into my my golfing lately i, I love okay. playing golf um I'm, I'm i love being around nature here in chile we have a, a natural paradise um we have the ocean we have the mountains so i just love to spend time there um around nature doing different alternative sports um i used to ski a lot uh Back in the days, um, a little bit of surfing as well, but everything just surrounding uh, nature is something I, I really enjoy. 
Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I've never been to Chile, but I've seen pictures. Uh we have mountains up here as well. I don't they're they're pretty cool, but I don't think they're as quite as majestic as the Andes. Uh yeah. and our beaches are are okay, but they're probably probably not as good. But I think you'll have a good time up here. Uh, because we also have the ocean and stuff like that. The Boston area is uh kind of unique in in the United States in that in that aspect, because you're really only about an hour away from mountains and probably about a half hour. I mean, you're right on the ocean in Boston, but for a beach, you're probably about a good beach, probably 30 minutes. So it's not bad up here. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. All right. This one's, this one's kind of a weird question. What is uh, the strangest fan experience like you've ever had, whether it was like an awkward moment with a fan or something that you watched a fan do and you were just like, Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, whenever we're doing like autograph signings, um, some people tend to get a little bit weird, just asking you to sign uh, <laughs> places that you're not, you're not used to sign. But yeah, you gotta do it for the fans. So, so that's something uh, that's that's been happening. Um, I hope, yeah, I can top of my mind. I, I, I can't be. Well, I have a funny feeling that we're gonna we're gonna go to the top of that list because we like to get weird and I don't know if they let you know, but after the matches, it's been a really cool thing. Uh development I think pretty much started last season or towards the end of the season before, where all the fans kind of whoever wants to stick around, they come on the field afterwards and the players will come out back on the field uh, out of the locker room or before they go into the locker room. So it's very interactive with the fans and and there's there's some unique fans out there, and I'm sure you'll have some fun. So it'll be a good time. Uh, good to know. Good to know. Man. Don't forget your Sharpie. I'll just put it that way too. Mm -hmm. And then um, this one, I like to ask uh, players this one because recently uh, over at the end of last season, I, I did uh, I did a Bronco. I, I I wanted to. I'd never done one before. So I like to ask players about like, what's uh, what's your favorite fitness test in rugby? Like, I know there's a couple of different ones, but yeah. you have one that you're like, man, I love that one. Yeah, I honestly don't enjoy any any of them. But <laughs> I think like um, Bronco is a good one, but we used to do a lot of yo-yo tests, you know, the, the yo -yo, okay. up and back. Yep. I think that the, like the type of fatigue I get on the, that test is really similar that, to the one I get on games. So it's like really... It relates a lot because you're you're running, you have a short rest, and you're running again, just like getting up and down, running and stopping. So I'd say your youth is is something we've been doing more. But recently, I've been running Broncos <laughs> instead of your youth. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so I, that's that's the fitness test I'll be doing this spring. I'm going to be doing my first yo-yo. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, I would just say, don't sleep on me. I'm not too bad. My Bronco time was 535. So I'm not the greatest, but yeah, I'm pretty yeah. solid. I like to I like to throw that out there as a, it's like a subtle fan flex to flex. I will not Bronco. be doing a Bronco, <laughs> but I will be filming and keeping the time for Bozo. How about that? I think I think what I said at the end was leave it to the professionals because I was cooked. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> Like I could barely get back to my car. So, all right, this one's, this one's rugby related for me. Uh, if you could play any other position in rugby, what would it be? Uh, definitely a center. Oh yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, all right. He's just crashing it up. So yeah, you go from the great. invisible player to the player that's like, yeah, everyone's exactly. watching. You have the ball with a little bit more space to some, some, some funny stuff there. Um, but also you get the the physical part of like defending properly and good defense. So yeah, so that that be the place uh, I'd like to I like to be. Nice. I didn't uh, I didn't have this one written down, but it just kind of hit me as we were going through the interview. So the New England Free Jacks, we got probably the best hair in MLR, and I noticed that you got some nice lettuce going on there. Is yeah. that like are you going to keep it coming in? Are you like what's the plan for that? Yeah, yeah. This this one, this is my my my. It's like my my lucky lucky thing. It's been with me for the last four years, so it's things have gone right uh, pretty well with it. So I'm not taking it. I'm not changing it. Nice, nice. We love to see that. We love. Uh, we got. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, the eagle, but he has this majestic <laughs> mullet. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It'll be good. It'll be good to see the, yeah, the, the locks forming. We can add some some New England colors or something to it. We'll add some size. Oh, 
Well, well, we might hold wow. you. Wow. Yeah. We might hold you. Though. I put well, that for you to, to see if you, you can get creative with the funds. All right. Timestamp. That was at 1950 in the interview. We'll put that in the description for reference if everybody wants to get out on there. So um, this one is like, so the New England Free Jacks, like we said, we mentioned that you're going to be the first uh, player from, from Chile uh, to be on the team. And um, we're quite the international group. Obviously, United States, New Zealand, Canada, Tonga, Fiji, South Africa, Namibia, and Ireland. And I think I got them all. That was the roster from last season. Um, what is something that's like, and we love to um, support all those international guys, stuff from their cultures. The fans really like to get into, into it here. What would be like something like distinctly Chilean that the Free Jacks could get into, whether it's like an outfit thing or uh, a food that we could be cooking up? Because we have a pretty legendary tailgate before the games. So what's something we can get into? Uh, I think uh, we we love to our barbecues in Chile. We, we love our, our good asados. We obviously have a really good meat down here. I think uh, just as good as, as the one you got up there. So... Maybe we can cook a, a, really, a nice barbecue, Chilean style. All right, Chilean style barbecue. I'm into that. I'm into that. We have a guy up here. He's a he's a something of a meat expert. Uh, he what is it? Runs a ranch. I forget what the name of it. Uh, but his name yes. is Mark. His name is Martin as well. Interesting. Interesting. Good name. And, uh, you'll definitely be meeting him. He cooks uh, cooks steaks for the team. So definitely something to look forward to. But uh, anyway, that's all the questions from me. Uh, appreciate your time this evening. Cheers, oh, man. Good questions as well. <laughs> Final thing for you here, Martin. Um, I wanted you to speak directly to the Free Jacks fans, the Rangers, as we like to call them. What would you have to say to them about you coming to New England? Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to getting a step into your into your team. Um, I know you. The team has been doing really well lately. Um, it's on a, in a good spot, so I'm just looking forward to keep on adding uh, that, um, uh, keep on adding whatever everything I've got to, to to keep on creating good good memories with you. So yeah, awesome, love that. We appreciate you being on here. I, I've been uh, playing hurt, as they say. I've been pretty sick, but I'm so glad that we were able to get you on here tonight. You've been fantastic. We say one word to exit the video. It's huzzah, and we're going to yell that in three, two, one. Huzzah! huzzah.